there really seems to be a lot of confusion in schools and with parents as to normal addition, subtraction, multiplication and division in grade 4 and 5, even going down to grade 3. Because the moment a learner gets to grade 6, certain things change as to the techniques that they are required to master. So let's just read this paragraph first, because this comes straight out of the CAPS curriculum. They say the size of numbers required in grade 6 means that methods, methods used until now can become cumbersome. Now it is advisable to use the traditional long division method. The skills learned in previous methods will now be used in long division. Now the question that we were given from a learner is in grade 4 where long division is required. And it's difficult to answer this question, to say, let me teach you how to do long division when the curriculum actually says that long division should only start happening in grade 6. So that prompted the recording, this video, of what exactly does the curriculum say about the division in grade 4 and 5. And then we'll take a look at the techniques as required by the CAPS curriculum. So, first of all, looking at grade 4, this comes straight out of the curriculum for grade 4, term 1. Uh, you can see there, going down to dividing, learners use what they know about multiplication to do division. In the past, learners have sometimes been taught to write out the whole times table, which they were encouraged to work out by repeated addition. So basically, let's say the 3 times table, it would be 3 and then 3 plus 3 is 6 and then plus 3 is 9, etc etc so rather than learning the times table they add repeatedly to actually get the times tables for the various numbers it is better th though not to limit the learner's division ability to repeated addition that comes straight out of the curriculum and look carefully then at what the curriculum says immediately after that sentence they are very specific rather let them work with useful and easily remembered multiplication facts, especially multiples of and then doubling and halving. Now, there is the key to this whole technique that seems so cumbersome and illogical in grade 3, 4 and 5 for multiplication, division, adding and subtraction. It's about mental arithmetic. It's about easing the learners into the technique by using things like multiples and powers of 10, doubling and halving. And as an example then, they've given us 75 divided by 4. Now, the technique that they propose is called a clue board, and it basically comes down to the fact that you can take this number that you are dividing by the 4, and say 4 times by 10 is 40. That should be an easy enough technique for a grade 4 learner to know multiplying by 10 or 100 or 1000, you just add zeros. Then doubling that, so rather than multiplying with 10, let's multiply with 20, then we get 80. So that's basically just doubling the previous answer. But we are looking to get up to 75. So obviously doubling to 20 is going too far. So let's stick with the 40 and then rather say, let's half the 10 to 5 and that then gives us 20. So now we already have 40 and we have 20 which is 60. And gradually we are creeping closer to the 75. And then ultimately the learner comes up with that answer. Where we used the 10, then we used the 5, and then we used a 3 to take us all the way up to 72. And then there is a remainder of 3. No long division or short division. Then we move over to this side where we are now looking at a grade 5 curriculum extract. They say, as with grade 4, learners are not encouraged to treat the digits separately. In other words, the normal vertical multiplication, vertical addition, vertical subtraction and long division. If you think about the long division, just looking at the examples that we've got there, we say 3 goes into 5, then 3 goes into 9, then 3 goes into 2. That's treating a technique for treating the digits separately. 
but rather to consider the number as a whole to keep and to keep the value of the parts of the number in mind. In other words, what they're saying there is also remember the expanded notation. That actually comes into play very much in adding and subtraction of the expanded methods. We are working with your units, the tens, the hundreds and the thousands and so forth separately. But you're still looking at the number as a whole. You're not treating the digits separately. Now, sometimes in the past, learners were taught to write out the whole times table. And we've seen that sentence in the grade four again, where they were encouraged to do repeated addition. Then many learners got lost in the extensive repeated subtraction of the divisor when dividing three digit by one digit numbers. When dividing three digit by one digit numbers, it is preferable for learners to work with the easily remembered multiplication facts of multiples of 10. And then again, we see the words doubling and halving. These large groups of numbers can then be subtracted from the number being divided into. In this way, learners do fewer subtractions and are more likely to arrive at the correct answer. And then, once more, we are told about the clue board. This was in grade 5. And then, as we saw in grade 6, when they get to grade 6 in the curriculum, that's only when the words long division actually comes back into play. So... Looking at the specific questions here on the right hand side that were sent to us, we can take a look at long division, but I would also like to take one of them and explain how to use that using the clue board. And there are various uh, uh, different variations of the clue board that we can take a look at. But for now, just simply looking at long division and short division, and uh, or not short division, long division and the clue board for these examples, just to actually illustrate both techniques now that we've established that ideally long division should not be in grade 4. But let's just do it anyway. So what happens is you take the 3 from the outside and you divide it into the first digit. So 3 can go into 5 once. Then that 1, or whatever number it is, is multiplied with the number at the front. And then you get the 3, then you draw a line and you subtract. So 5 minus 3 is 2. Now, 2 is too small. The 3 cannot go into the 2 again. So, you bring the next digit down, which is the 9. And now, you say 3 can go into 29 9 times. And then, if you multiply like that, 9 times by 3 will give us 27. Draw a line again and subtract. So, this process gets repeated over and over again. Multiply, draw a line and subtract. 29 uh, 29 minus 27 will give us 2. Again, that 2 is too small for the 3 to get divided into. So we bring the next digit down, which is another 2. Then we say 3 can go into 22 7 times and multiply again. 7 times by 3 is 21. Draw a line and subtract. And that number that remains at the bottom is the remainder. And that is the answer. That's the technique of long division. We can also take a look at the second question, just to go through that process again. We say 5 can go into 7 once. 1 times by 5 is 5. Draw a line and subtract. 7 minus 5 is 2. Then we bring the next digit down, which is a 9. 5 can go into 29 5 times. 5 times by 5 is 25. Draw a line and subtract. And then we get a 4. Now, just take a look at the fact that that 4 that was written there should actually have been under the units column there. 9 minus 5 is 4. Then we bring the next digit down, which is the 3. And we've got 5, uh, five can go into 43 8 times. 8 times by 5 is 40. Subtract and 3 remains. And that then is the remainder. And 158 is the answer. Now, with the clue board, looking at that exact same question we've just done, 793 divided by 5, what we can do is to say 5 times by 100, for argument's sake. That will give us 500. We're looking to get as close as possible to 793. So, 500 is then already quite a substantial way forward. Then we can say, but let's now try half of 
the 100 and we say 5 times by 50. Now, this is where multiplication techniques comes in because 5 times by 5 is 25 and then you just add the 0. And then we can actually add those two together by getting the 100s and the 10s and, and the units added up will give us 750. And then we are not quite there yet, but we are almost there. So from 750 to 793, you can now do the subtraction or you can just sim simply creep forward by saying, let's take 5 times by 1. That will give us 5. Now, that's quite a long way to go to 793. So let's try 5 times by 10, which will give us 50. But then if you add the 50 to the 750, you'll get 800, which is just past the 793. So let's not use 10. Let's use 9. Let's see what happens if we use the 9 over there. 5 times by 9 is 45, and then you add that to the 750, and that will give you 795. And we just passed the 793, which means we can rather go for 8. Let's say 5 times by 8. That will give us 40, and that will give us 790, and then we can see that there's another 3, and we can't get 3 with 5. 5 is too big, which means the remainder is then 3. 790 remainder 3. But we need to get as close as possible to that answer, because that obviously is the answer. We crept all the way up to 790, but the answer that we are looking for will be in the numbers that we've multiplied. The 100 the 50 and the 8. That adds up to 158 that we had to multiply the 5 with and that then is exactly that answer over there. So with the clue board we literally, it's a very cumbersome technique. Let's be honest about this. This is not a very efficient and nice technique that we can use but we can gradually get there but because we are doubling or halving, we are using timetables, we are using simple addition, gradually creeping all the way up to that number. And that is pretty much, if we read what the curriculum says about this whole clue board thing, about multiplying with tens, multiples of ten, um, doubling and halving, etc. That is what the clue board is all about. So long division is a very um, efficient technique to do division but it's not supposed to be, do, be done in grade 3, 4, and 5, specifically because the learners still need to learn number facts, and they still need to learn how to do mental arithmetic with doubling and halving and um, facts of multiplication, multiplying with 10, 100, and 1,000, and so forth.